Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. A ton of you have been recommending that I listen to Rush, and I feel like it's a very big gap in my knowledge, so we're going to fill that gap today. And I'm going to be listening to Getty Lee's vocals for the first time, and I'm also very excited to hear Neil Peart. I hear he was just a legendary drummer, so I think that'll be really fun to discover. Um, and we're going to be listening to The Spirit of Radio. I have a quote about this because I was looking through the lyrics beforehand and was really touched by how much, uh, I believe it was Neil Peart that wrote the lyrics, how much he just seemed to love the radio. So he said that The Spirit of Radio was actually written as a tribute to all that was good about radio, celebrating my appreciation of magical moments I'd had since childhood, of hearing the right song at the right time. The lyrics look so happy and wonderful, with a couple, a couple of sober moments, of course. And so I'm really excited how this is going to sound when put to music. Let's get to it. A uh, couple of really cool things to mention just in this intro. Uh, I find it fascinating how quickly they're shifting in and out of tempos and even textures as well. Um, it's really uh, the tempo overall, um, even the time signature, I think, shifted at one point. It, it's very interesting. It feels progressive yet somehow classic too. Uh, yeah. That's really fascinating to me to have happen in just the first 40 seconds. I I don't know if we ever had uh, more than five or 10 seconds of a single tempo. There's just tons of shifting happening. Uh, additionally, uh, I did read about this before. Uh, back, Yeah, there we go. Giulielmo Giul Marconi. I believe he was one of the people responsible for inventing the radio. So that's a fun call out. It's also really cool to see how the sound waves turned into their names, which is really helpful because I'm not familiar with their names very well yet. So anyhow, back to the beginning. <laughs> back and catch um, these first few moments of his voice again several times uh, was not what I was expecting. It sits higher than I think I was expecting. And um, that the, it doesn't have as much aggression in it either. I guess I was kind of expecting a little more aggression because uh, a lot of the things that people have recommended on the channel have been more aggressive lately. And this has a certain smoothness to it. It's um. It almost could be sung by a, a contralto female in some ways. Uh, anyhow, his sound is really, really interesting to me, so I'm going to go back and catch it again. Uh, also, the the overall vibe of this is really fun. I like it. It's got some uplifting uh, feelings to it, which uh, I think pairs well with the lyrics that just seem to really love the radio. <laughs> I 
I can tell he's really specific about his consonant placement. And he has a really interesting stylistic slide that he's done a few times in here as well. Let's go back again. More? There we go. So, so far we don't have a really big range that I, I've heard, um, but he's got so much clarity in the sound and uh, it's got um, a lot of uh, pep to the sound right? that's coming through. And again, that consonant placement, he's very, very specific about it. Really mm, what I would call sort of chewing through the consonants. He's giving them a lot of definition and that's part of what makes it to have that that peppiness to it. And at times he even seems to speak, uh, like just give a tiny, a tiny bit of, I guess, speech inflection off of the words, which is really fun. Um, like he almost hollers on one. That's really cool. It works with the, the style very, very well. I wanna go back a little further. Yeah, these animations are awesome. I don't know why, but I just really like this song already. <laughs> um, and I really want to do this too. Is is this a thing that people do during concerts for the fresh? I, I don't know. But the the talking hands thing um, or hand puppets, I, I don't know. I used to make shadow puppets all the time. So um, I, I just, it's very, it's it makes you want to have fun along. Uh, you know, sometimes his voice is just, I think it's also thinner than I expected. Uh, I think I was expecting a, a more hefty sound. And instead we have a sound that is much more pointed and specific that really works for this kind of peppy feel. Okay, uh, back a little bit. <laughs> Why do I want to do this with them? <laughs> So there we go, a little more, um, a little more harshness a couple times in there in his attacks on honesty, especially, which is really interesting because this is one of the only spots in the lyrics um, where I felt it might uh, not have as much pep in it. You know, there's this uh, incredible love of the radio throughout in the lyrics, right? You begin the day with a friendly voice. It sounds really lovely. And the magic music makes your morning mood. It sounds magical, right? Um, but then, it's really just a question of your honesty. Yeah, your honesty. Um, I think that gets really interesting that he's repeating honesty and questioning it twice. Um, and 
uh, he's talking about there was a coldly charted before and one likes to believe in the freedom of music. So you start to get this idea that maybe he's questioning some interesting things about it. And right after that, we're going to go into shatter the illusion of integrity. So there is a, a sort of uh, undercurrent here of there's this incredible love for the radio, but there's maybe some questioning of commerce behind it. I'm not sure exactly what he's questioning, but I found that the lyrics on top have that incredible uh, happiness and sort of joy in them. But then there's some really deep moments that make you consider, okay, what are these undertones here? So I, anyhow, really fantastic, super fantastic lyrics. Um, besides that, I feel like this is very addictive for what feels like maybe early progressive music. The way it's shifting a bunch, um, it, it feels like it's moving into a lot of places. It's a uh, yeah, it's strangely addictive. I'm starting to understand, um, really caught it from the beginning, actually, why people like Rush so much. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go back. Not so fully charted, it's really just a question of your honesty. where he sounds a little bit like Bruce Dickinson. Just, it's in those top, the ways that, um, the top uh, pitches, the way he sort of, he almost um, does a, a healthy yell on them to get them out. It's more like a holler, a healthy holler is the way I'd put it. Um, it's It sounds very supported and connected. So you're not hearing uh, a lot of strain that's up there. Um, just, I think it'd probably be pretty loud. Um, and. I wonder if he was influenced at all by Bruce. I don't I don't know what his influences were. Please let me know in chat, by the way, if there are certain influences for him as a vocalist. Um, it's it's really fascinating. He is still staying in this more limited range, but it's a pretty high range. And he cuts right through it. And he's got just a very specific sound that works so well in this overall style. Um, I'm kind of, I'm surprised. Again, I, I really, didn't expect this at all. And I didn't expect to also just enjoy, feel instantly like, oh, I want to kind of dance and do weird hand puppets. It's got, it's got something so addictive about it immediately. Okay, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Let's go back to the hand puppet part. Okay. And right there, listen to the way he, he yells off of tender. That's the part that reminds me of Bruce Dickens. It's the placement too, it's not just the holler. I think his mouth is very open for that too. The drumming in here is so, so smooth in something that I think would normally sound slightly awkward. Um, all right, this doesn't feel like a normal 4-4. It feels different, yet Neil Peart makes it just flow. Uh, that's very interesting. I'm sure it's other elements of the musical composition as well, but there's a, a very surprising flow in the drums 
uh, unexpected. <laughs> So at one point in there, I think we had like a maybe a 7-4 that happened, but there was also another shift that happened. And of course, we're back to, a, a, I think, a 4-4 four, four here. Uh, I'm a bit surprised how, how undisturbing that shifting was. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just surprised that that shift in there. It was really cool and fun again. And um, it was different. And man, I think it's just so unique to hear such a large, daring shift in music like this um, when it also feels so, um, so mainstream in some ways in the way that I could hear it on the radio and possibly addicted. I don't know if Fresh played very much on the radio. Um, it might be one of the reasons I'm not very familiar with them. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, this this changes. It's really drastic, yet still works. Like that's calling back to the beginning. Wow, oh, nice job. Gets me all revved up for the next part. Is there like a steel drums in here as well? There's, uh, and the time shift is just so cool and the way it's flowing so easily. It's really written on the studio wall. Got a little reggae feeling. Like. And then back to classic rock. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm seeing with the um, animations, but this might be Alex. Uh, Lifeson? Lifeson? Leafson? Um, again, I'm really not familiar with them. So uh, I think I think that that's a different singer. He definitely has a different sounding voice here. So uh, I don't know. Maybe Getty is able to really shift his tone a bunch. <laughs> A desire to try to make all of these guitar sounds with a voice, right? There's such cool sounds. I bet some of you can do really harsh, good harsh vocals to do this. Yeah, I. Shout out there. If anybody has ever made these kinds, has ever duplicated this guitar solo with a voice, I'd be fascinated to hear it because 
it would have to have like so much bite in the top. You'd have to have harsh vocals distorting in there too and going so fluidly back and forth in between it. I think that'd be a really, really fun challenge. Someone, someone send me an example of that being done. <laughs> okay, we could go. It, that, that ending, I like the way they got that little bit from the beginning in, just like kind of inserted a tiny bit in there, which really made me want more. So I'm gonna go back and then I think, I believe that there's a, a little um, memorial I wanna say to Neil Peart at the end of this. <laughs> This was such a fun introduction to a band. I, I really love all of these tempo and time signature shifts and how, how fluid they are and how kind of out on a limb they go sometimes, but still make it work. The overall addictiveness of the song was really, really high for me. Um, yeah, I, I just, I love the vibe of it too. It really has a ah, a peppy vibe. I like it. And then I love that the lyrics added that extra layer in it. Um, I'm really curious if that was another singer at the end. Guys, definitely let me know. Um, and also, I understand a lot more about why people talk about Neil Peart and the way he's uh, such or was such a fantastic drummer. Definitely, you know, RIP Neil Peart. This, is, this was incredible. The fluidity of it was just amazing. And that it was really fascinating to hear Getty Lee. I have, I had no idea what he was going to sound like. And now I have this reference that is so much more specific than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I, I thought that he was going to be super rangy for some reason and have uh, lots of depth. And instead he's really focused in a particular area. And I, I think he is so perfectly suited for this sound. I'm actually, I'm shocked but he's not doing things that are incredibly crazy. He's just doing something that is perfect for the sound and doing it really, really well. I, I love that, that peppiness that he has in his voice. And I love the attention to consonants and little slides and details. Oh man, uh, overall this band just has me intrigued and I would love, love to hear more. So please sound off in the comments down below what song you would like to hear next. And you can also find me here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. That's when we have live premieres. And by the way, if you liked this video and you want to watch more like it, there's a playlist right here. I'll see you in the next one.